Does generating meaningful business insights still feel manual, slow, and reactive? Are your business users still waiting on IT or analysts for reports? Enterprises are leveraging modern BI, but fail to tap into the true potential of Gen BI. Boris Evelson, the VP and Principal Analyst at Forrester Research, gives five recommendations for successfully implementing Gen BI solutions. It's time to move beyond outdated dashboards and slow reporting cycles. This is how we evaluate these solutions, and that's how we recommend you, uh, you look at them. So on the next slide, I'm going to go um, uh, hopefully quickly. Uh, there, there's so much to talk about and nev never enough time. We'll go through five recommendations. The very first recommendation is that uh, you definitely need to either build or if you're buying a solution or a platform, you need to understand how these guardrails uh, are formed and what is it that you do. The way that you interact with large language models and generative AI is literally just through a single prompt. That's the only thing large language models understand. You, you give it a prompt, you ask it a question, and it gives you an answer. So the input guardrail is your one and only chance to do things like, well, if uh, I, 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 you want to restrict somebody's access to a certain data set, that's where you do it. Uh, if you want to mask some of the PII, private uh, information data, that's where you do it. If you want to change the question based on your enterprise semantically or your enterprise knowledge graph, this is your opportunity to do it. We call this uh, a prompt engineering, very, very important capability. At the end of the day, even if you did your job right uh, and, and, and you asked a very, very precise question in a secure way, at the end of the day, large language models are still probabilistic, so they'll still tell you what, what they, they think they're going to uh, say. So now uh, you also need to deal with output guardrails. So things like, you know, moderate the content. What, what if the content is uh, inappropriate? What if somebody said uh, in a prompt, they said, delete all my data, right? The, you know, obviously, very toxic uh, question. You want to block that, et cetera, et cetera. You, want to, uh, 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 you also want to explain uh, uh, the lineage and transparency and explainability. How did the large language model arrive at the answers that it, uh, uh, that it did arrive? So that, that's a very first um, recommendation. Spend as much uh, time either verifying, confirming, or building and enhancing these guardrails. That, that, that's really, really critical. Move to the next slide. Uh, <clears throat> is, uh, is uh, 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 the recommendation to invest in personalization. Uh, traditionally, and I'm sure most of you on the phone still potentially segment all of your business, uh, the, the, the audience of BI uh, environment into either authors or consumers, authors or consumers of data. Uh, we don't think the world uh, uh, today and going forward is that simple. Uh, so let's let's talk about, let's start with the middle of the slide. Uh, there is a proactive interaction with data, right, where I proactively ask a question. To the right of that, there are alerts and there are subscriptions to data set where I don't really have either skills or time or luxury to interact with data proactively, but I still want the data to tell me something if something of interest is going on, right? So proactive uh, um, uh, versus reactive. Then on top of that, there are two ways to interact with data, uh, e either uh, uh, via a graphical user interface point and click, drag and drop, or now via uh, questions and answers. Uh, and we really think that uh, majority of BI uh, functionality needs to be embedded via what we call, um, uh, delivered via what we call embedded business intelligence, embedded in all of the systems of work. So if you spend your entire day in, I don't know, in Salesforce and Workday and SAP Oracle, et cetera, applications, that's where a business intelligence needs to be uh, delivered. So if we go to the next slide, this is, at the very least, uh, uh, this is how we see uh, uh, the segmentation of users. There are analysts, who data analysts, business analysts, who will potentially still uh, uh, be using a, a graphical uh, UI. There are business users who will now um, uh, interact with data via a Q&A. There will be some users that uh, uh, will just subscribe to a data set um, and uh, just, just receive alerts whenever something interesting happens. And we do think that the majority of data interactions uh, 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 will be happening via embedded. We really uh, like the call embedded uh, BI. On the next slide, 
Now we're going to talk about uh, the importance of that semantic layer. You can't really have a a, a rich and effective and efficient natural language uh, uh, interaction with data. So definitely uh, invest as much uh, resources and as you can into uh, into uh, building out that semantic layer. The next recommendation, the one before last, uh, uh, on the next slide is uh, to, you know, kind of the buy versus build uh, a question is a serious uh, a question here. So definitely consider buying before you consider building. You know, why do we say that? Well, Gen AI is, as you obviously, uh, you know, carrying out from this conversation, is bringing a lot of benefits to enterprise BI, but it's only a part of or the end-to-end -end BI uh, platform, and, you know there are other pla there are other capabilities that you still need to build, and uh, you know guardrails are uh, you know quite complex uh, uh, to build and uh, and maintain, and achieving 100% accuracy in natural language to query is doable, but it's not uh, it's not trivial. So definitely, again, consider buying before uh, before you build. And the very last uh, recommendation, the last slide. Um, uh, is that, uh, you know, uh, agentic AI is absolutely bringing, uh, you know, agentic AI beyond just generative AI is bringing tremendous capabilities here. So we already talked about uh, automating uh, multi-step processes, but it's not only that. Uh, and then we at Forrester started talking, you know, maybe about a year ago, and we're doing a lot of research into decision intelligence because business intelligence by itself only takes you from data to insights or, 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 or to signals. What about capturing the fact that you made a decision to act on your insight and you actually took an action and that action turned into a tangible business outcome? All that is mostly going to be doable and mostly going to be real with agentic AI. And if you do indeed implement that entire uh, process, then I think you can graduate to what we're calling decision intelligence. Transform your legacy BI systems with the power of Gen BI and unlock faster, smarter, and more accessible insights across your enterprise. Want to learn how? Get in touch today.